If you're subscribed to my channel, you'll notice that a lot of my recent videos have been me kind of exploring curriculum that teaches you how to code online. And I feel that it's only right that I do one on Free Code Camp. My first live stream ever was let's explore the Free Code Camp curriculum, but then it really diverged into more of a Q&A. So I wanted to do a proper video for Free Code Camp and going through all the curriculum and what they have to offer for you to learn how to code. And that's what leads me to this video. So let's just get started and check out what Free Code Camp has to offer. Free Code Camp has been around for a while. It's one of the first resources that I use to learn how to code. And all the stuff that you see checked off here, I've actually recently made videos on and live streams where I do a walkthrough to help people and guide them through Free Code Camp's curriculum. And if you wanna check that out, I'll make sure to link it up above. But what I'm gonna do in this video is just kinda of show everything that Free Code Camp has to offer. Free Code Camp is a nonprofit, it's open source, it's 100% free, and it really sets you up to get ready for a job. Just a high level overview here of what they have to offer. You see they cover responsive web design, they cover JavaScript algorithms and data structures, they have front end libraries, they have data visualization, they have APIs and microservices, quality assurance, scientific computing with Python, data analysis with Python, information security, machine learning with Python, and interview prep. And let's take a look at the responsive web design section. They'll start you off with basic HTML and CSS. Most of the stuff that covers web development, they use a lot of their integrated text editor, so you can actually get right in here and do the problem and the learning section here on the side, and then you can answer your questions by using their integrated text editor here and you'll see your results right here on the page so for instance i believe this one just wants you to type hello world and there you have it you see how it updates right there on the side now like i said most of their web development stuff is going to be like that with the integrated text editor and they cover a lot of basic stuff here in the responsive web design for html css applied visual design applied accessibility responsive web design principles, Flexbox, Grid, and then they have projects. Free Code Camp is project-based learning. You'll work through a lot of the stuff that they have and they'll teach you along the way and then they'll give you projects to build at the end of a section once you've completed that curriculum for that section. And then you'll build these projects. They have you use CodePen for a lot of these projects and that's how you'll submit it for their certification. And they give you a story here. They tell you everything that you need to have and they give you all the things that you need to check off in order to consider your project complete by what they're asking for. And this is very common how user stories are set up when you work as a professional developer. You'll have items and tickets that will have stories that will tell you things that you need to implement on the application that you're working on in order for it to pass. So Free Code Camp kind of keeps that same structure in order to kind of prepare you for real world experience and give you a little bit of a taste of what it's gonna be like to actually work as a developer. And as you work through the curriculum, things will get a little bit more difficult. After you're done with the responsive web design section, you can move over to the JavaScript algorithms and data structure section. Here, they're gonna cover a lot of basic JavaScript. They're gonna cover ES6. They're gonna cover regular expressions, debugging, basic data structures, basic algorithms, object-oriented programming, functional programming, intermediate algorithms, and then they're gonna have JavaScript algorithms and data structure projects. And as you can see in the JavaScript projects, this is where you're gonna really start programming on your own, and this is when you're gonna apply all the stuff that you learned above for all this JavaScript stuff, you're gonna apply it in this section here, and you're really gonna work a lot of the stuff that you've learned in the JavaScript section in these projects. Now you kind of see the structure and how Free Code Camp works and kind of how they're gonna have you go through their curriculum. You're gonna go through a lot of the stuff that they're gonna teach you. You're gonna use their integrated text editor and then you're gonna answer the problems and complete the projects in the bottom. And for the JavaScript algorithms and data structures projects, you're gonna be using their integrated text editor for this. You're not gonna be using CodePen. I mean, you can if you want, but this one just checks you and passes you based off of you re responding and using their integrated text editor here for the data structures and algorithm section. Now, 
as you move through this, there's going to be more stuff and you're going to just kind of keep leveling up as you go and you're going to be picking up more and more things along the way. The next section after you're done with the JavaScript portion of Free Code Camp, they're going to teach you about a lot of front end libraries. They'll start you off with Bootstrap and then they're going to teach you a little bit about jQuery. They're going to cover SAS, which is a CSS preprocessor, and they're going to do a deep dive into React. Now in the React portion, they still use a lot of the integrated text editor stuff. So that's what's really nice about Free Code Camp. Much of what you're going to be doing is going to be in Free Code Camp, and you're going to be using their software and their website in order for you to like work through everything. Versus the Odin project has you set up a lot of the stuff in your local environment. So when you're learning the React section of Free Code Camp, I kind of prefer spinning up a local React app on my machine and understanding how to get that up and running, but it is kind of nice to be able to just get in here and start learning about React and not have to waste a bunch of time getting it installed on your machine because that could be time consuming and for a beginner, it might kind of turn them off and make them not really enjoy themselves when they're trying to learn. And, and then once you have a basic understanding of React and you feel a little bit more comfortable, you can go ahead and go and install React on your local machine and install Node and NPM and get it up and running locally. But if you just wanna get in here and kind of get your feet wet and learn about this stuff quickly, that's one thing that makes Free Code Camp pretty cool. Um, then they're gonna cover Redux, they're gonna cover React and Redux and tell you a little bit more about you know, getting started with React and Redux and all those things. And then they're gonna cover the front end libraries projects. And these projects are really good if you don't have anything on your portfolio yet. These are good items that you can start adding to your portfolio as you continue to learn. And that's what I did when I was learning how to code. I remember creating the random quote generator. I remember creating a drum machine, but I created my drum machine from West Boss's JavaScript 30, but it seems like they have you build a drum machine now. I remember creating a calculator and I remember creating a Pomodoro timer, which is this 25 plus five clock. And these were all projects that I had on my portfolio for a really long time when I was first getting started. So You'll learn a lot, you'll build these projects, and then you'll have stuff that you can show off and you can talk about on your portfolio. And that's one thing that I love about Free Code Camp. That's one, that's one reason why I always recommend doing project-based learning like Free Code Camp or the Odin Project, because as you learn, you have things that you can build that you can show off on your portfolio to potential employers and you can then add on to those things or start using that knowledge from building those projects to build something of your own. And we'll just keep moving through and keep looking at the rest of what Free Code Camp has to offer. We went through the responsive web design section, we went through the JavaScript section, the front end library section, and now we're getting to data visualization certification. Now this stuff, I never, I never did any of this stuff. This is areas that I just am unfamiliar with as far as Free Code Camp goes. When I did Free Code Camp, it was a while ago, and a lot of this stuff is a little bit newer and it's just stuff that I never did or worked on through their curriculum. But we can take a look and see what it has to offer. Data visualization with D3, they talk about JSON APIs and AJAX and how to handle different AJAX calls and what AJAX is, and they teach you a little bit more about that stuff. They cover the data visualization projects where they actually have you build some pretty cool looking stuff here, a visual, visualized data with a bar chart, visualized data with a scatter plot graph, visualized data with a heat map, and a few other projects that you can do for data visualization. And as you continue to move on, you can, you can keep doing more of these things, but honestly, if you did like the top three, that's a really good start if you're trying to be a front-end web developer. I think that the first three sections of Free Code Camp is gonna really be all you need if you wanna get into front-end web development and take that path. The data visualization, the APIs, the quantity, the quality assurance stuff, the scientific computing with Python and all this other stuff down here, except for the interview prep, is all stuff that's not necessarily specific to web development and specific to front end web development, but it is stuff that can teach you a lot. I would probably say that you should do the APIs and microservices section because this is gonna get you more into a bit of back end development. And if you're trying to go a full stack route, these are probably really good for you to start off with and maybe get a basic understanding of full stack web development with JavaScript. And they talk about managing packages with NPM. Now I know that eventually 
some of the free code camp stuff moves on and and they have you learn on videos that they have on YouTube and they kind of take a bit of a turn and they have you do stuff locally and they don't just focus on their integrated text editor because some of these things you can't really handle with their integrated text editor, unlike the front end web development stuff, which you can. But as you continue to move through here, you'll see that they have the basic node and express, which if you saw my previous video on the Odin project, they cover a lot of that in their full stack JavaScript section and node and express is going to be the backend server side and the framework that you use on the server side for handling data and whatnot. Not. So it's very common if you've heard of the Mern stack, if you've heard of the mean stack that works off of Mongo Express React and Node and Mongo Express Angular and Node. And here, if you follow their curriculum, they don't cover any Angular, but they do cover React in their front end libraries and they cover Node and Express here. And then they get into MongoDB and Mongoose and then they cover APIs and microservice projects that you can build. Now this stuff is gonna be really good if you're trying to become a backend web developer or a full stack web developer. Here's a few good projects that you can do even if you don't do free code camp, I always refer people to free code camp for their projects because if you are struggling with ideas for projects and you kind of just need a little bit of guidance on what you should build for your first few projects, I always tell people to check out free code camp and I always tell people to check out the free code camp projects. And as you can see, every section has projects that you can do no matter what the topic is. So if you want to learn a little bit of back end web development and you need some ideas for some for some projects to build, check out the APIs and microservices projects here that you can build with Node Express and MongoDB. So as we move through, we'll, we'll briefly take a look at some of the quality assurance stuff that they have. They cover some quality assurance testing with Chai. They cover uh, advanced Node and Express here, um, which seems like they, they really get into a lot more of what Node and Express has to offer. They also have some quality assurance projects here, which has you do so, they make you create a metric to Imperial converter. They have an issue tracker, which is maybe create your own like Jira board or whatnot, personal library, Sudoku solver and uh, American British translator. These sound like some really advanced projects. I have personally never done any of these. They seem really cool and they seem like they're really gonna be very challenging just from what they're saying that they are. If you get in here and you work through these projects, I guarantee you that you'll learn so much. The The best thing about uh, Free Code Camp, again, just like the Odin project, it sets you up in a way to get job ready. Their main focus is teaching you things that you can apply in the real world as a professional developer and get you job ready. And that's what's so awesome about this. And it's 100% free, just like the Odin project. That's why I always recommend these two resources. And I usually recommend Free Code Camp first because I just feel that it's a little bit more beginner friendly and you can get in here and just start coding right away and start learning right away without having to worry about all the extra stuff that you can then learn later on. But all that extra stuff is really good to learn, like setting up your local environment, learning Git, and just understanding how to work on your machine outside of an integrated text editor. But, you know, either one of these are really good and I recommend them both. Take what you like from both of them and apply it into your own stuff because eventually once you learn enough from these platforms, you can go ahead and just start building stuff. You don't have to be so strict and stick to their curriculum, you know, to a T. You can you can diverge a little bit and you can mix it up and find what works for you and once you get into a good groove and you feel that you've learned enough, just don't even come back to tutorials unless you really want to brush up on something or understand something a little bit better. I say just learn through building stuff. That's what I usually recommend for people. But let's go ahead and finish up to see what the rest of the stuff that they have. And once they get into their Python certifications, they cover a lot of stuff with videos from their YouTube channel. It's one of the biggest programming YouTube channels. I think they're over 3 million subscribers at this point. And it's just it's just great stuff that they have there. So you can see that a lot of their Python stuff is going to have you go through their videos and they're gonna be a little bit m less like the web development stuff and a little bit more like the Odin project where you're gonna be installing stuff on your local machine, you're gonna be doing stuff locally and you're gonna be building things on your computer rather than in their integrated text editor and on their website, you're actually gonna be doing a lot of this stuff on your own machine. And as you can see, the pattern here for the Python stuff is gonna be more or less, you watch a video, you answer some questions or you try to do it on your computer and follow along with what they have you do and what they teach you. And then 
they're going to have more projects. They're going to have Python projects here, which is a lot of stuff that you can build in Python for the scientific computing stuff. And then you can get into the data analysis with Python and then you can the same thing goes with their data analysis section for Python. You're going to be watching some videos. You're going to be answering some questions. You're going to be working through the curriculum on your computer or just working through the questions that they have you answer. So they kind of quiz you a little bit and then you're going to move on to their projects that they have at the end of that uh, section. And then there, they have information security here that they use helmet JS and a few other things they have. They teach you a bit of penetration testing with Python and that's going to be in the same format as the other Python videos. They're going to, you know, have you set stuff up, watch videos and then run stuff locally and answer questions here. And then they're going to have projects that you can answer. And I'm not going to get too much into the machine learning stuff. You see that it's going to be the same as the other Python sections. And we'll just finish off by looking at some of their interview prep stuff. The coding and interview prep section is really great on free code camp. They cover a lot of good stuff such as algorithms, data structures. They even have a whole list of take home projects. These projects are really good. If you need another list of project ideas to build, if you want to kind of get a little bit more comfortable with some of the projects that companies might have you do or similar to projects that companies might have you do. Many companies will have you like take home a project and do it over a day or two and then turn it in in order for them to kind of assess if you're going to be the right candidate for the position. And here they have a long list, 20 different take home projects or 19 different take home projects that you can do on free code camp. This is just really good stuff. If you're trying to have more projects under your belt and you're out of project ideas, or if you're ready to start looking for jobs and you want to just get a little bit more practice building projects that you might come across during interviews and the job application process. And then they have Rosetta code, which I'm not really sure what Rosetta code is. It seems like it's, it's a bit more of algorithms and, different questions that you might get asked when you're applying for jobs. At least that's what it seems like to me. So they have 160 different exercises there that you can do. And then they have this last project here, which um, is just a whole bunch of more algorithms and problems that you can try to figure out and do on your own uh, just to get more practice and preparation for interviews. And that's pretty much it. That's all a free code camp. You know, they have the times here that they estimate how long it'll take. Everyone is different. Some people will get through this faster than others. But remember, the main focus is to complete the projects because that's where you're going to learn the most. With all that said, I hope this video helped anyone who was curious about free code camp. I highly recommend it. And if you enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button, comment if there's any other curriculums that you want me to kind of do a video like this on and make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in watching more stuff like this on my channel with all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.